Hi, my name is Lorenzo Lyons. I'm from Technical University Delft in the Department of Cognitive Robotics. And today I'll be presenting our work, Curvature Aware Model Predictive Contouring Control for ICRA 2023. This paper is about a motion planning algorithm for mobile robotics. Autonomous driving in general has been receiving a lot of attention as of late, both from the controls and robotics community, but also from society at large. This is because autonomous driving is seen as a solution for many problems connected to urban mobility. For example, it promises to increase safety, reduce fuel consumption, and reduce traffic congestion. The control policy is a central part in autonomous driving. This is because it connects the perception of the surrounding environment with actuator commands, for example, steering and accelerating and braking. Here we present a revised version of model predictive contouring control. Over the Senate formulation, our proposed method has the ability of handling sharper turns in the reference path and is also easier to tune. MPCC is a variant of model predictive control specifically designed for path tracking. As such, it features the general steps you would find in a normal MPC formulation. So at every control loop, a fresh measurement of the system state is available. Then over a finite time horizon, we optimize a series of control inputs. Only the first one is actually applied to the system. We wait, and then this process is repeated. Against the, M the standard MPC formulation, MPCC avoids the need for an explicitly time-dependent reference by introducing an additional state variable, S represented here, which is the progress along the path. This also allows to introduce two new terms in the cost function, which are the contouring error, which is the lateral deviation from the path, and the lag error, which incentivize the vehicle to move forwards. So how do we get the idea for this paper? Because MPCC has been around for a while. It was developed around 2010 in the context of machining. So for example, cutting metal sheets using a laser or a water jet. It was soon after also applied for mobile robotics without any substantial modifications. However, in machining, very small deviations from the path are allowed, since that is the key parameter for assessing cut quality. In the context of mobile robotics, however, larger deviations from the path are allowed because it doesn't need to be tracked as precisely. Indeed, we noticed two kinds of failure connected to large deviations uh, from the reference path. For low gains, we observed incorrect lane boundary evaluation, which leads to the vehicle actually violating these constraints. And for higher control gains on lateral deviations from the path, we observed a significant drop in longitudinal speed when steering saturation occurs. So how did we improve on the standard MPCC formulation? Essentially, we increased the accuracy in the predicted progress along the path in the open loop trajectories. Indeed, if we look at the picture, in the standard MPCC formulation, the path is locally approximated as a straight line. Whilst in our formulation, we were also able to include the information on the curvature. Thus, we locally approximate the path as an arc of the oscillating circumference, which is this term here in the dynamic constraints. Having more precise progress along the path estimates, we are able to correctly evaluate lane boundaries and also eliminate the need for the lag error term, which is connected to the veloc velocity drops that I was referring to in the previous slide. On top of this, having one less parameter, our method is also easier to tune and is more reliable. Right, so now let's have a look at some experiments. On the left, we show our formulation, while on the right, we compare it to the standard MPCC. The task is to drive around the track with increasingly sharper and sharper turns while avoiding collision with a dynamic obstacle. As we can see already on the second bend, the MPCC exhibits the lane boundary evaluation failure we have previously discussed. Also, it remains stuck behind the dynamic obstacle on the sharpest turn. This is connected to the presence of the lag error term. Of course, this is just one example for one set of tuning parameters. But in simulation, we were able to prove that our method is more reliable and easier to tune. We did this by varying the parameters in the two control algorithms, and also by randomizing the size and speed of the dynamic obstacle. 
that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you soon in London.